Our next question is, why should we say Abba, Father, when we talk to God? Paul shows that believers cry out Abba, Father, in Romans 8.15. Let's read that. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, Paul writes to the Romans, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba, Father. And most Jesus following people, they go, I don't know that I cry out Abba, Father all that much. It's a concept, you can say the words, but it's a concept of Daddy, Daddy. Our Heavenly Father sent Jesus to teach us the begin, to begin treating the Almighty God, the great supreme being of the universe, to begin treating Him as a wondrous personal father figure. Now, in my case, my father died when I was 15 months old. I didn't have the father figure. But, and some people have had poor examples of father figures. But, but God wants us to begin treating the father as a wondrous, personal, father-type person. Paul told the Galatians that when the Spirit of Jesus is active in our hearts, it helps us cry out for help to our Abba Father. In Galatians 4.6 and because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son, that would be Jesus, into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So this is a very close personal relationship. Jesus had an Abba, Father relationship with the Father in heaven, Mark 14, 36. And He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. This was uh, less than 24 hours before he was to be brutally tortured and agonizingly killed in crucifixion. Take this cup away from me, but he finishes it out. Nevertheless, I would, I would like not to have to go through this, Jesus is saying. Nevertheless, not what I will or what I want, but what you want, Father in heaven, Abba, Father. Jesus always put, doing the Father's will ahead of doing His own will. Jesus and the Father are urging us, every one of us, all of us who want to be followers of Christ, they are urging us daily to build this same father-child relationship with the Almighty God, call Him Father. So we have this father-child connecting is what prayer is about, what praying our Father is all about, is what Abba Father is all about. The disciples had talked with Jesus face to face for more than three and a half years, but He was about to leave the planet. So He instructed His followers on how to connect through prayer with the Godhead in the future days. In John 16, 23. And in that day, ahead of time, right? He's talking to them, John 16. This is the last couple of days of his life. In that day, in the future day, you will ask me nothing. They had been talking to him. They had been asking him. They had been chatting with him face to face. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father, who are you going to ask? The Father. In my name, He will give it to you. Wow! This, this puts the Father right in the center of the picture. In future, we are to be asking our Father in heaven, this building, this connecting, this father-child relationship. When asked the best way to pray, Jesus taught this in Luke 11, 2. When you pray, He said, pray our Father, not just my Father, but our Father, the believers, the saints, the body, the church. The church is the body of Christ. So pray our Father. We all need help down here. Our Father. You could pray our Abba Father. You know, to understand that He wants to be in a very close relationship with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I honor you, I glorify you, I praise you, I adore you. You are my loving, wonderful Father, hallowed 
be your name. Your kingdom, Father, come. Now, Jesus is the king of the Father's kingdom, but you're praying, Father, we want your kingdom to come. It's in heaven. We want it to come to earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is that saying? That's saying, Father, I want your will to be done in my life. Now, today, while I'm praying this prayer to you, and tomorrow, I want to live and do your will on earth, because your will is done in heaven, and heaven is a glorious, wonderful, peaceful place. There are no wars in heaven. There's no hunger. There's no problems like we have on earth. The first person to see the resurrected Jesus was told this message in John 20, verse 17. Jesus said to her, this is Mary Magdalene, this is early in the morning, he said, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. So he died, he rose again, he hadn't left the planet yet. He said, go to my brethren, go to Peter and James and John and the others, and tell them this message, and say to them, I, Jesus, am ascending to, I have to read this part slow, my Father and your Father. Right? Notice the emphasis there. Okay, he'd been calling the Father his Father all the way through three and a half years of ministry. Right? But he's saying, tell them this message. I'm ascending to my Father and your Father. Or what's that add up to? Our Father. And to my God and to your God. Yes, he's the God of the universe, but he is to be viewed as Abba, Father. Close relationship. After Jesus left the planet, the Father took a powerful, hands-on role of helping and training each and every believer. John 16, 27. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me, said Jesus. If we have a true, passionate love for Jesus, the Father responds with a great love for us. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments, says Jesus, and keeps them, you know what they are and you do them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved of my Father. Also in John 14, 23, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our home or our dwelling place or our abode, or we will be within you, connecting and working with you day by day. Verse 24, he who does not love me, says Jesus, does not keep my words, doesn't pay attention to words, doesn't follow the words, doesn't agree with the words, right? And the word which you hear is not my word anyhow. It's the Father's word. So when you hear Jesus saying something, remind yourself, that's what the Father told Jesus to tell us. Jesus frequently teaches that each believer is to progress daily towards seeing themselves as a dear, dear child of the Father in heaven. God our Father is ready and waiting to respond on our behalf. Matthew 6.6 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father, your Abba Father, who is in a secret place, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. We all want to be rewarded openly, but we've got to do the other part too. Verse 18, so that you do not appear to, be, to, to men to be fasting. When you fast, you don't fast to men, but to your Father. You're fasting, you're worshiping, as, fasting as a worship service, to your Father, who is in a secret place, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. But you've got to do the whole program. James writes, urging everyone to draw near to God in James 4, 8. Draw near to God, he says, and he, your Abba Father, will draw near to you. Notice how it's phrased. You make the first step. Then he does the second step. You make the effort to draw near to him. Our life of service to God, our Father, will be stronger in every way if we continually, daily strive to draw closer to our loving Heavenly Father. And that's what it's all about, drawing close 
and doing. Now, a lot of people, they, they don't like that doing word. Most followers of Jesus reject that drawing close to God is dependent on our doing His will and making life changes. It's right here in the scriptures. Matthew 15, 8. Jesus said, These people draw near to me, Jesus, with their mouth. They say it, they sing it, and they honor me with their lips. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The rest of the verse, But their heart is far away from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You've got to have the right messages. You've got to have the message the Father gave to Jesus. Jesus gave to his disciples. His disciples wrote it in Scripture. If you don't have the message of Jesus straight off the pages of your Bible, you're in danger of believing doctrines that are the commandments of men. Looking again at James, James 4, 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's only a part of the verse. The rest of the verse is cleanse your hands, you sinners. Clean up your act and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Are you totally committed to God or are you half committed to God and half committed to living a good life? Verse 9, lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Whoa, this doesn't sound like fun. Just for a period of time of fasting to your father. Verse 10, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up or reward you openly. Hebrews chapter 10 reinforces this idea. 10, 21. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to Abba Father with a true heart based on the true teachings of God the Father in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Our loving Heavenly Father wants to powerfully help His well-behaved children doing the will of the Father. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, the throne in heaven, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And don't we all have that problem? Aren't we all needy in some aspect, in some way, day by day, week by week? If we see the Almighty God as our personal, loving Abba Father, we are much more likely to desire to please Him and therefore reduce the sin in our lives. Colossians 1.10, Paul writes, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, fully pleasing the Lord, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in knowledge, the knowledge of God, knowledge that He is your Abba Father. You need to see Him in that light. Hebrews 13, 21, that make you complete in every good work to do His will. Remember Jesus said on the day He was dying, uh, your will, not my will, Father, to do His will, working in you what is well-pleasing in His sight through the, the efforts of Jesus Christ working with us to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. What are we saying then? Our Father and His Son, Jesus, constantly desire to draw closer to each one of us, but they wait for us to make each first move. If we make a first move each day, they will, they've promised, they will draw closer to us. They wait for us to be focused on doing the Father's will. 